Okay, so here's my explanation video for this level, The Ghost of Christmas Stupid. I actually had this level title like last year, but I never finished building the level. So right at the beginning here, I have kind of a reference to like the spike ball chain from one of my other levels, except that since this is snow theme, it doesn't work. But then it does this. Uh, the setup up here is I just have this thwomp that only triggers when you jump over here on the left. You don't even need to hit the block, just jump over there somewhere. Thwomp falls, releases a pow, goes on this conveyor, then it'll be sitting on this block, and as soon as you go past the mole, it blows up that block. Unfortunately, when you go past this mole and then go over here, it doesn't do anything, but I think enough people saw it. Snake blocks just nothing. This setup here is kind of interesting because it was basically just an excuse to have this launcher here that shoots a fast moving shelmet. Except I had to then, if you watch it, shelmet goes, hits that hidden block, dies, and then it, it fires another one out that actually gets stuck there. And that's because if I just had this, You can kind of see there, the shell is actually moving slower. So I just die to it instead of riding on top of it. Which is really weird. I didn't know before met trying to build this that note blocks slowed down shells, but I guess that's a thing now. Uh, this frog suit troll is really simple. It just jumps up this terrain here and hits this note block as a fish. Okay, so what triggers the on off switch to go off to carry you with the shell is this setup down here so these orange platforms basically they only move once they're like on screen or near on screen which that that means like vertical screen scrolling affects them so this platform won't start moving until you're both past this point and low enough for it to go and also notice that this bomb has a parachute on it. That's because with an enemy with a parachute won't stack. And when a when an enemy is stacked, it like sinks down slightly into the thing below it. So it actually blows up faster if it's not stacked. I also have this breakable block above it so it doesn't go off in a later part of the level. Alright, into here, I have... The re a reference to the red room, the cat's level. I'm actually gonna set this to daytime now just to. so I can play and still be able to see anything. So, the first time you enter this room, this spike ball. well, roll the wrong way because I'm spawning. It'll roll to the right when you come out of the pipe because it when you come out of a pipe or a door, spike balls roll towards you. It'll just. it'll break this brick block which kills the thwomp. Uh, and then you go in the door, this room, this troll with the thing with the spike dot coming out, it's a super simple setup, just another spike ball and it hits this. The interesting thing about this is that like if, if, if this spike top, the wing was say like a fire bar. A fireball, a potaboo, or a fish or something, it wouldn't actually kill you because things that come out of note blocks don't hurt you for a little bit after they come out. But I think because you can like stand on spike tops, it will hit you immediately. And also like munchers would hit you immediately, but they obviously don't go through the ground. And when you get back here, this swamp is spawned, so it'll hit the switch. That sets off that would set off this setup, and this setup is it's a thing where note blocks push launchers into each other, and I just have another launcher on top. You notice this frog suit here is actually not making a sound. That's because with frog suits, uh, note blocks with a semi solid there, like this thing here, it, it's silent for some reason. And I have this conveyor thing to spawn, or just to hit the switch a second time. It's stacked, the bomb is stacked on top of the muncher like that. It just goes into the normal position quickly, but that's just so that to make sure it spawns when you come out, of, come back out of this door 
so that the setup here goes off properly every time. All right, then you go in the key door. You come to this room. In that pit, it's just a hidden block on a track. They give off light, so I thought like, oh, maybe you'll you'll see the light down here and think it's something, so you jump down there and just die. This setup here is a little more complicated than you might think because I actually have two springs behind one launcher. So there's like, there's two ways to put a spring behind a launcher. Either you bounce it up into the launcher or you have a note block above the launcher, push it down onto the springs. But with this setup, I'm actually doing both. So the first one gets pushed up into there and then it'll be sitting on the second one. And then right after that, this one up, well, uh, what even triggered that? <laughs> right after that, this one up hits the note block, which pushes it down onto the other spring. And this is using the fact that a big muncher won't come out of a pipe if there's a solid thing two blocks in front of it where this launcher is. I also have this launcher which just falls down and it sits here. That's the, that's only there to keep the muncher from coming out of the pipe again so that you can get through here more easily. And just wiggler parachute thing. All right, in here. So this troll was basically like, oh, you're bouncing between springs. You don't know which way you're gonna go. You think you gotta hold right. Uh, the bomb is just, here to blow up this and push that up but this thing is what trig detects when you jump it's actually only certain like it's actually difficult to detect when you jump in a one block high gap because if i were to use just say like a thwomp here it would either be too high and jumping doesn't trigger it or it's too low and it triggers immediately when you come out of the pipe with this snowball claw setup here and also, what I originally had was like a, a beetle on the ceiling. That was inconsistent though for some reason. With this snowball claw setup, standing here won't trigger it, but jumping will. And it just hits the slope and hits this switch. Then this thing. This entire area over here only really is designed the way it is because of the cannon swapping troll. Which barely got anyone anyway so uh, uh, totally worth it like and this mole troll here only exists because of the spike floor with the tracks in the spring that I already had falling down what this spring is actually doing is it allows the frog suit to jump up into that fire flower because for some reason the frog suit is able to jump before like before this stuff even falls, the frog suit jumps up and it goes in here. And this troll in, in earlier versions, it actually just looked like that. And the troll was like this and you, you know, it's bad. But then I realized it's, uh, pretty late that you could actually see, you, you can just see the fire flower in there. It's, it's pretty, it's, pretty visible with that like two red pixels at the top so people saw it and then I just reversed the troll and now it's getting everyone okay so the cannon swap out troll or setup so the spring launcher is just here then here's the snowball one and I have these tracks and the blocks on tracks uh, the thing about the spike floor is that a block on tracks overlaid with spikes like this will actually be able to move things so if i just sit in the ground right here should be able to see that moves over that one gets carried out and then it just does that and all right next one would be this this thing so when you are right here, when you hit this pow, when you hit a pow, these guys will drop off of the ceiling and he'll hit, 
the, he hits that note block immediately, which is again, note block with a launcher and then a conveyor under it. It'll push it into other launchers. And if I, I don't have the sprites for this. I can get rid of this one. Uh, if I, and just to do it right, if I grab another POW, this is kind of interesting because when I throw this POW, you see he hit the note block, didn't make a note block sound, and died. Uh, yeah, I don't know why that all happens, but it's kind of interesting. It's a simple setup anyway. And then the actual thing is this beetle up here, which hits the switch. And this is using the fact that a POW that isn't hit by the player has limited range. So it's so this is just placed so that it will only kill the first four munchers and not the other ones. All right. This setup, I know a lot of people were confused about how this one works. So the whole setup here is this mole at the bottom of the screen. He, this mole is in the ground. And it has a thing stacked on it with a cannon and a guy. So if I start right here, that's just set up so that as soon as the mole starts moving up, it'll blow, it'll crush the big bomb and blow it up. Uh, and this is just resetting the switch again. But when does it move up? It moves up when you get in range around, like there's the detection range for the mole and that's based on where the mole is going to come out of the ground. So if I, I don't know if this is just going to work, but we'll try it. It, uh, is it? It should. If I start like here, no, it doesn't. Why? Okay. <laughs> Whatever. I want to show this. What is blowing up? Okay, I'm just gonna destroy this block. So, now see, the next, see that block is the first open space above the mole. So, if I get close to it, then it'll, it'll blow up the thing and do the switch stuff so the first open space above the mole isn't anywhere at, when you first reach this area because it's at the top of the screen then when you destroy this block the first open space is right here so if you're standing there throwing the shell like directly at the block from right next to it it'll go off immediately bounce the shell back at you and you can't do anything about it but when, when this is destroyed its range ends like right here so that if you're standing all the way over here it won't go off yet and then you'll jump at these blocks and they'll block you and drop you in the thing that and it's all just this setup so that's neat i was kind of surprised no one's been using that because i think wilfred showed a tweet with that setup or something similar like months ago okay this troll you can see basically all of it you can see basically all of it, but I kind of tried to hide this conveyor. Uh, something to note about it is that, like, this snowball thing isn't necessary. You don't even need two of these blocks. If I remove one and just sit here, icicle falls. That's just to release a guy. And that and this spinning, I'm pretty sure is because of an animation when a spike top gets pushed like backwards off a conveyor like that. It it spins anyway. The twister is just pushing it back into the corner of the conveyor so that it keeps spinning. Right in here. This is just a claw with a fish. This room, I kind of wanted it to be like, like, oh, you jump to the vine, but look, everything else was safe except where you went. And there's also just a swamp up here. This guy... This pokey does the spotlight effect. Well, you can't see you can't see it because it's day, but you 
but when the swamp changes the pokey turns around because the conveyor switches and then it highlights this block i don't think anyone even fell for that troll but something and then this is just a block behind the saw because when you have a helmet or not when a launcher is stacked on a solid thing and that moves up into a block it'll crush the it'll crush the thing it'll crush the launcher this setup is just p switch activator off screen from screen scroll all right then you get to cp2 so this setup was actually kind of complicated to make happen. And so first, there's a row of fire flowers and one fire flower that's different. Right? And can you go to the right? Spike ball hits switch. These, the row of fire flowers hits the note blocks. All these fish have parachutes on them. But this... And this last one doesn't. That's because... The reason these ones have parachutes is because of the thing where an enemy coming out of a note block won't hit you for some time. Giving these a parachute makes them hit you down here. But if it doesn't have a parachute, it won't hit you. And that's why this one doesn't have a parachute. So that, it, so that the last fish in the line can't actually kill you and, because I was trying to make it easier. And also, once these on-off blocks change, they block the pipe, so you can't go in it. And that's why I have this whole thing over here. So basically, what has to happen is you go to the right. Is the switch is on blue, you go to the right, it goes to red. And then you go back, and it has to switch twice. So this one, this spike ball just respawn, just like is spawn blocked, and then spawns and hits the switch. This other spike ball, this other spike ball, I couldn't do that because it would respawn, then it would, then the switch would hit again, and it would, and the spike ball would just die. So what I had to do was have it sitting on top of the block, above the block like this, so that it would load in, and then despawn, it gets bounced off screen. forgetting that they go the wrong way it gets bounced off screen by the spring and then we'll respawn above the block and just roll over it and I also have some track over here for let me to come and fall on your head right right after cp2 is kind of a thing so the first time you get here, the switch is in the red state. And then every time you respawn, this spike ball will immediately hit the switch and set it to blue. So it's one of those checkpoint changing setups. The first, all right, I'll just go through what I wanted to have happen at this section because it didn't happen too often. So basically you'd come here and you see, you jump around to read the high and you'd see this vine. And you're like, oh, I'm going to check up here. But look, there's a muncher. I'm not going that way. So you go over here. And that's already open. Well, no, it's not. There's a muncher and then you go the other way. And it's... Whatever. And then this, this setup wouldn't go off the first time. Then you'd respawn, check, and you're like, oh, it might be different. I'm going to check the vine again. You don't see the muncher, but that's because the muncher is gone, and it's actually a launcher this time. And then the launcher falls down and blocks you, and you die again because you were wrong. And then you would come over here, go in that spot, and the thing shoots up and hits you. This... Making this guy shoot up was actually pretty complicated. So you'll notice this one up is sitting on top of a blue block. 
so that if when this gets hit immediately it'll go in the right it'll go over here to the right and fall down but if you come in from the side like you would the very first time it would this would get hit immediately setting it to red and then it would just fall into this little gap and be stuck i also have the launcher and this stack and this and the ball trigger over here so and notice that everything that needs to load in is at at least this height like this line here because it's a vertical area so stuff only spawns pretty close to the screen it can stay loaded all like all the way down here so I have to have the launcher fall down then move into place to do again the upwards hyperspeed so like those fall down and also this launcher gets pushed into place inside of that by the conveyor it actually needs to be pushed to get this small launcher on here, I have to use another note block. It's not because it's like clipping or anything. It's just because it, it's just to position it because the conveyor doesn't push it far enough on its own. You can see there that it got moved over. And this switch block is what controls when it, when this gets hit because this note block is what makes it actually go up. What's next? Alright, then you come into this room. This setup is really simple, but it's like darkness manipulation based. So when this is actually. Let's see. I would have to set it. When this is actually dark and you're actually playing it, it there's darkness over this little hole but not other parts of the conveyor the important thing to about it is that it, that the light comes from the arrows there's a lot of arrows in this level and that's just to give up because they give off light and these ones are just lighting up parts of the conveyor so you can see it try to jump and avoid it and then thing I actually ran out of arrows building this. Now, now that's to the Thwomp Troll. So if you notice when you come out the door initially, it's like all the way up here for some reason. So that's because it needs to load this. I needed to load all of this stuff. Then drop you down so that you can't see it. And then you come over and Thwomp Patrol. So what I originally wanted with... So the first Thwomp Patrol is really simple. What I wanted is that it falls down. Like, alright. It'll fall down and then he starts moving up and you run under and you get wrecked by the note block. But then the real the real troll is that it gets pushed over. So when you hit this P switch, these blocks turn to coins. Then because you hit a P switch, this bomb blows up, which it triggers the pow, and the pow will make the coins fall, and the. Okay, so the the way this swamp moves is that it gets hit when it gets hit by a note block above it. It'll go to the side if the note block is like like if I hit this note block, it'll push it'll push the guy over a little bit like that. And what the pow does, it'll it'll drop the coins, but it drops the coins in like a wave 
going all away from the pal to it like drops all these in order and it's like hyper speed kind of so then all those hit the note blocks and the swamp goes really fast then but that wouldn't work because the pow because if there was just like a regular block right here the pow would just kill the thwomp and we can't have that because then there's no thwomp so hit the p-switch sets off the pow the pow also kills this muncher which will immediately drop on the bomb the bomb is stacked so it won't die all right and the bomb hits the switch and then this the switch changes this block and it actually changes in time so that that become so that like the power goes off won't hit the thwomp this becomes solid so the thwomp is on top of it and it won't just get pushed down into the hole and then and it gets pushed over and hits you i think this stuff is self-explanatory just conveyor you can see conveyors under saws but it's worth saying oh so this little setup it's a spike just a spike ball and a note block but if i didn't have this one way uh that's if i don't have the one way it actually takes it takes a little bit longer if you don't have the one way it's bare it's barely a difference but it does do something <laughs> so this thing i this saw is unnecessary so is that saw kind of and this saw when you come out of this pipe i just wanted to establish that there's like a semi-solid and these saw blade things for the later setup but i also figure out this troll because when you hit this note block drops a one up hits this one this one drops a snowball and when a snowball lands on a slope it'll immediately roll and be able to hit other blocks and then the, this shoots out a giant wiggler and for some reason the giant wiggler is actually able to fit through this little gap bounce off of those and then shoot you up here which is actually really weird and doesn't make any sense but i, I guess that's how the game works then this thing this whole mushroom thing is just a distraction it'll never actually fall through this uh that's just on a conveyor you can see it if you jump up there down here down here is where the real the real setup so i have this launcher lands on a sloped conveyor and then there's a semi-solid under the conveyor that like aligns the that aligns this launcher in that exact position and that's actually a really kind of weird positioning for a launcher because you can't fit down the gap the fire flower can fit down the gap and the spring goes shooting up the launcher and hits you into the thing that's basically just i have a mole right there so that mole when the switch is off and you're on the left side of the mole he'll push the spring into the gap between the one way and the launcher and that makes that's what makes the spring shoot up so if you're like anywhere over here that's that comes and then there's also this snowball and this is about where i should point out how annoying it is to build in snow theme when you're used to using spike balls for everything because snowballs don't work the same and they're a bit more annoying so this snowball exists to roll down here to roll down it would get caught on this conveyor just like that and then when you hit the switch it comes over here and kills the mole that's so that once this thing falls down the mole won't push that up and do the stuff so that it can be a twice twice whatever thing okay then then the ending setup so down here these two blue blocks you could see are hiding 
are actually to get rid of a shell bone shell. You can see what it did. It hits this, bomb spawns, and then the block, the track block here, will come down just gets triggered and then blown up in the spot. So th it's that's all to just spawn a vine so that the vine can then be missing the next time you're here. So, and the reason these two burners are here is if these were replaced with just regular ground blocks and we have the same setup go off. See, this vine is behind the ground. This one that came out of the block is in front of the ground and that would look pretty clearly suspicious but with burners it goes behind both of them so you can't you can't tell that the vine was spawned from a block also the reason i have to spawn this bomb out of here and have like two extra sprites to do the bone shell thing is because even if i even if i blow up the bomb and destroy the blocks and everything when you reload this room again, there would just be a bomb sitting here. And it would be weird. So it has to spawn out of a block so it won't come back. And I can actually spawn block this with switch blocks. And then the second time, the second time you load, it'll be in blue. So that block is gone. That's gone. And that just blows up the vine block immediately, so it doesn't... So it doesn't do anything. This what triggers the switch. The P-switch is actually a super simple setup. It's just a big mole and like a little path here. You'll come out the pipe to the right of it. It does this. And then, gets, and then hits that. Hitting that causes the anti soft lock stuff to come down. So the reason I have like two launchers here and a muncher here, that's actually because I needed in for the anti soft lock, I needed an infinite P switch to get to not allow not let you go back in the pipe and to open up this one for death. So this. I thought the best way to do that was to have a launcher and that. And this other launcher is what spawns frog suits, but it's also blocks up this little hole so that you can't get, so you can't stand next to the P-switch one and stop it from firing out P-switches. And this extremely suspicious setup that you can see what it does, but it hits all these note blocks in order to spawn springs. Weirdly, the like, even if you're over here, sometimes sometimes you can avoid getting knocked down by that. I tried to do it there, but it didn't really work. Like, you can just get kind of stuck in the springs and you'll escape fine. This is the room with the thing. This room doesn't have much in terms of setups. There's it's just this bomb down here, which is spawn blocked by a brick and the spike ball hits it and I got this thing. But this room did go through a few revisions and it's actually because like the vine disappearing troll. So that the whole purpose of that troll was like you think you'd want to lose the mushroom and come back and then find out that you actually needed the mushroom or something because the vine is just missing. And even though the vine being gone part is kind of is like new and interesting, the you need to get hit and go back, but oh no, it's different. You didn't need to get hit. That's kind of a old troll at this point. It's been done a few times or whatever. You'd kind of expect it. Yeah, so that part to the troll didn't wasn't really working before. So then with the original version of this, 
so I completely remade the room and we have this version of it. I actually made it I actually made the level more confusing for the purpose of getting that troll to work better and it's kind of it's kind of paid off. So the first thing is that you can go back in the pipe off this muncher which requires you to hit yourself to go back in the pipe. Uh, that's for anyone who like tries to big brain it and do that first because then you're guaranteed to get messed up by this troll because you you know you had to get hit but then I needed a way for you to actually go in the pipe which like actually go back in the pipe big since that's the solution so I had to both set off a pow to kill that muncher and give you a pow or some other platform to go back in the pipe off of and that's where this troll came from. But I couldn't just like give you two pals because then you could take one of them back in the pipe by taking damage and then you could cheese it. So I make you hit one pal. So I make you like do, go over here, hit this pal, get this pal. And it also serves as a troll if you're trying to go to the right because you're just like, like, oh, I'm just going to go over here, hit this, and then, oh, no, look, it's the pow I don't have. And then in other versions, this pipe was just fake, so you try to go in it, and then it's like, oh, what do, what do I do? I found that, like, some people got it reasonably quickly to not take damage as they go back but a few people got confused so I eventually they gave up on designing a good level and I just put this hint in where you go in here where you can actually enter the pipe and it's like hey go back in there it doesn't tell you where to do it off of power or a muncher if you need the mushroom but it does tell you to go back and it's been it's worked all right then like you go in and out again this blows up, and then you... And that's the ending. I'm actually gonna... Let's see. She kind of want to show the old version of this, since it was significantly different. Here's V1 of the level. This should be V1. Yay. V1. In here. So you see in V1, I just had a donut to go back in the pipe and a path over to the right with spikes. Uh, this did not work at all because even though like Literally no one tried going to the right here, which is interesting. Everyone found this donut. And it's like, oh, you can go back in the pipe on the donut. And then, like... I don't know if everyone just expected the mushroom troll, or some people, like, forgot about taking damage or whatever, but everyone would be like, oh, look, there's a donut. I can go back in the pipe. They still have the mushroom. Go back in here. And then... Uh, okay, not sure why that happened, but go back in here and you, you win because, you know, that's how, that's how it works. And this one also didn't have, like, a hint. It didn't hint over here. It just said, you just go over here and it says no and it's a block. But since this was so much simpler, it didn't. I don't think it would have needed a hint, but it also didn't work, so it stopped existing. I think that's pretty much everything for that level.